Live from Burbank, California. Welcome back, everybody, to day two of the ESL Hearthstone Legendary Series Season 2 Grand Finals. My name is Frodan, and once again, I'll be walking you through the weekend's festivities where one player will walk away as Season 2 champion and claim $10,000 and 100 World Championship points. Day number one was absolutely epic, as we expected it to be, as we had four players advance through. As four players were eliminated, in Group A, we had Trump and Demigod managed to push their way through. And group, group number B, we have Kit Kats and Domdis. Group B is a number. And uh, we had a lot of fun there, although Kalento did end up falling. Today, we'll have the same exact thing happen in group C and D. Two players will go through per group. And ultimately, we're going to have eight players go through to the single elimination grand finals on day number three. So let's take a look at how the schedule will break down. We're starting at 11 p.m. Pacific and going all the way till June 7th here at ESL, ESL underscore Hearthstone on Twitch TV. Make sure to hit the follow button and let your friends know all about what's going on. On day number two, we're also going to have Group C with Raynad versus Roger, Ross Kaka versus Wlos, and Group D we have Life Coach versus the Rat, and Season One Champion Sunstorm versus Phone Tap. And let's go ahead and break down what we can expect to see. Once again, for anybody watching Hearthstone for the first time, we use a format called Conquest, which is a best of five format where you have to win with once with each deck. Once you win with the deck, it is eliminated for the rest of the series, but every game thereof is blind pick, so you don't have to stick on the deck. It's according to your choosing. Also, we want to remind you about the great prizing, about how it's going to be breaking down. We mentioned that $10,000 goes to the first place finisher, but we also have 230 World Championship points and $25,000 total for the entire weekend. We also want to remind you guys to stay engaged in the conversation by hashtagging HLS. Let us know about your feedback, your opinions, your favorite moments, uh, as well as tweeting at ESL Hearthstone. If you're a really cool tweet, maybe we retweet it. Maybe we feature it on stream. Depends on how things go, but the more clever you are, the higher your chances. And if so, you also get an opportunity to win some cool prizes with our raffle, ESL.GG slash Season 2 Finals, where you can get some cool giveaways with our headsets and gear. Thanks to our sponsors, Plantronics and Gigabyte. Big shout out to them as they enabled us to do things that we love. And with that, so we also want to welcome you guys. Enjoy yourselves. It's going to be a long day. We have plenty of great matches, and our first one promises to be Absolutely a lot of fun. We have Raynad versus Roger. Now, this one is really cool, partially because, one, we know a lot about Roger as he's an up-and-coming player qualifying for everything. But we don't know too much about the rest of the group, so I can't wait to see what's going to happen with Oskaka and Wlos as well. So let's get ready for our first match of the day with our video as we introduce the group. My name is Roger, and I'm 22 years old. And I'm Spider. 他就是有幫我給我一些建議然後看比賽要怎麼準備然後跟出國的一些困難我這個比賽我覺得我比較害怕的對手是盜賊的那張準備你時常要去猜測對手想要做什麼就因為沒有想過這語言之後會這麼的重要然後可能就之後有時間就可能要去多學習其他的語言然後這樣以後有機會才可以跟他們
叫聊天啊，就是当朋友，我觉得还蛮可惜的。对，不不知道怎么说这语言，然后就其实也没有办法一起玩，就没有办法一起沟通。嗯，平常没有玩 House Stone 的话，就是就可能会去运运动啊，就是打打球之类的，然后或者是看看电影，然后还有玩，还有玩看看网页，就也没有做其他的事情。嗯，他们就觉得。很厉害，很不可思议啊！就是可以玩游玩游戏玩得这么好，然后可以去其他国家看看不同的东西，他们觉得很棒。嗯，要是我赢的话，我就可能会回台湾去，请朋友们一起大家先吃个饭，然后再把钱存下来，看看要做什么。就我还蛮感谢我的家人啊，还有我的一些队友给我一些建议，然后他们很支持支持我，然后让我出国，这样我觉得。像台湾，他们玩的 Hearthstone， 他们的牌就是比较，就比较正常，就是比较一般的牌。然后像欧美洲，他们玩可能就是会玩比较不一样，放一些比较有特色的东西，就是感觉就还蛮，感觉蛮新鲜的，就是这样。就美国还有欧洲，就是他们玩的东西可能就比较新鲜，然后没有看过。就感觉很酷，我我不知道我能不能就是赢到最后，但是我我希望我可以拿一个冠军回去，就我还蛮希望的。Wow, quite the stirring interview, and I had no idea Roger's voice was that deep. He gives me a run for my money. I sure hope he doesn't learn English too well, because he might come after my job. I'm sitting next to Keaton Chucky Gill, who's also on the commentator's desk and did an excellent job day number one. How you doing? Doing pretty great. Excited for day two. It's great. Uh, you know, what do you think about that interview with Roger? He even outright said that he wishes he could speak English more and connect and make some friends with the players. Have you been able to get to know him at all? I haven't really gotten to know him, but I do know, you know, he was willing to go out to dinner with us and, you know, kind of wanted to hang out with all the players despite really having a language barrier between us. So, you know, I think it's pretty cool that he's open to that kind of stuff. Was he able to touch your stone cold heart? Oh man, I might have might have teared up a little during that video. Absolutely, it definitely touched me as well. And of course, his opponent Reyna, we didn't get an opportunity to sit down with him. I believe、uh, he is here in the studio, though, getting ready for the first match. What do you think about the first match up here in Group C? Well, I think Reyna and Roger are both really good. Roger's been qualifying for a ton of stuff, and Reyna had a dominant run through his group. So, both players kind of just coming into this off the back of some good recent performances don't really, you know, have much to prove, but. I know Rogers, one player that a lot of other pro players are never really disappointed by, and it's just every time we watch, we're just like, "Good play, great play," and so I think we'll see a lot out of him. What storyline excites you the most? We have Raynad Roger Oskaka Dubulos, and then Group D we have Life Coach the Rat Silent Storm and Phone Tap. Well, I think Group D actually excites me the most. It has two kind of new players that are really looking to make a name for themselves, and Phone Tap and the Rat, as well as two really. Strong players and life coach who just came off a win at Via Game and Silent Storm, who's the season one champion. So, kind of a story of new versus old. Some people trying to kind of defend titles, and I think that'll be a really competitive group. Silent Storm has to win because、uh, he defeated some really impressive people on his run last season. Correct? Yeah, Silent Storm、uh, had a pretty tough run here.、Um, he beat me, so cheering for him a bit. Hopefully, he can maybe defend his title. All right, and that's a great way to wrap up our little preview, at least for now. Until then, we're going to head over to our commentators, Crip, Azumo, and Firebat, who are waiting with our first match. All righty, thank you very much, Dan and Chucky, and welcome, guys, once again to the Hearthstone Legendary Series Season Two Finals. Of course, my name is Azumo. I'm joined by Crip and Firebat. How are you guys doing today? Doing pretty good.、Uh, I have to say, I was actually very impressed by the interview. I think、um, I think attitude you can really see when people have it, you know, in the right direction.、Uh, Roger really、uh, very relaxed, very calm, focusing on the right things. Not even in Hearthstone, you know, he realizes, you know, language is such an important thing. With, yeah. You know, being internationally、uh, driven in the Hearthstone scene. Yeah. Very cool stuff. I was just overall very impressed.、Um, and、uh, yeah, Rain has been doing pretty well recently, hasn't he? Yeah, Rainhead's been doing pretty well. He qualified, I think,、uh, was it three zero or four zero qualifying to get to this? Yeah, he had a really impressive run、yeah. through his week. So,、yeah. um, and he had that 
his sort of infamous speech at the end where he said, oh, I played Patriot for the first time. <laughs> this is yeah. proof that anybody can win a week. So um, hopefully he prepared a little bit more for this one because it's going to be a really tough road ahead of him. And yeah, Roger, um, he's been at the studios pretty much every day. And he, he talked about he has trouble connecting with, with players uh, that speak English because he just never took the opportunity yeah. to learn. And but we had we had a few translators from like he's been so, yeah. he's been social he's been somewhat connected just he was uh, I was trying to get him to yeah. teach me Chinese him and Soundstorm who also um, speaks Chinese uh, they were trying you, to you teach me some Chinese things. I learned how to say orange soda but I already forgot hmm. what a shame was it orange soda <laughs> no oh. it was <laughs> something that <laughs> sometimes I'd, those have easy transitions yeah. you know I yeah, learned how to say hello words. ni hao so I, every time I see him that's what I say and I'm pretty sure he's getting tired of it. I was also um, a bit interested uh, from Roger's comments about um, you know him, him being from Taiwan. He's very uh, familiar with the locals that he plays against, but he sees very unusual things in America and Europe. Maybe yeah. you know something about that fire bat. Like, what what is the scene in Asia? Well, whenever I've played against Asian players, they always run a lot of tech cards. You can always expect to see things like Harrison Jones, Black Knight, and Kazan Mystic in most of their decks which is very unusual for here because Black Knight's been out of the meta for a very long time. And there's not too many decks running Kazans unless it's in a weird format like the Via Game House Cup format had a lot of Kazans in it. So, uh, yeah, I think that's more of the thing. And I think Patron Warrior took a lot longer to really even take off in Asia, if it even has taken off in Asia yet. Do you think having a, a lot of tech cards is really uh, like a negative thing? Like it seems a lot of people have brought the tech cards to this tournament so far and haven't really been punished for it yet? Uh, I definitely think it's a risk. I'm not saying it's a risk in a good way. or It's like, depends what the m people end up bringing. Sometimes they can pay off huge, yeah. and then you just like snowball and win a series. Or sometimes they backfire and you lose. So it depends on what decks you're going up against. But I do think if you're running like three different tech cards in one deck, it's going to cause many? for some clunky draws. So I think you really got to okay. try and focus on one or two maximum. Yeah, we were talking about it a little bit yesterday. It's better if you sort of have a, a singular goal instead yeah. of trying to counter everything at once. It's exactly. better to sort of focus on one specific thing. And uh, we look back at the Season 1 Legendary Series Land Finals where we had two Taiwanese players, Weifu and Pimping Ho. And we actually saw Roger talk a little about Pimping Ho in his interview and how they practice a lot. And they both brought uh, Weifu and Pimping Ho to the Season 1 Finals. They both brought a lot of tech cards. It was yeah. something that did happen. And... Uh, they didn't have much success in that tournament. I believe they both went out pretty early on. And it was because when they faced off against decks that their tech cards were useless. Okay. So they would get caught with a bunch of dead cards in their hand. So, yeah, not sure how that's going to work out. Yeah, decks definitely should have a purpose, a goal in mind. So you have a build up and then a solid end game. You can't just be like, I want to beat everything because that's not how Hearthstone works. Now, we predicted a lot of people would play um, mid-range-ish Hunter. Mm -hmm. and Patron Warrior, while, you know, there was quite a bit of variation from that. Like, a lot of people played Control Warrior. Yeah. A lot of people played different versions of Hunter than Midrange. Um, but, like, the the classes weren't far off. Like, uh, it turned out yeah. that just about everyone was playing Hunter and Warrior. So it, it seems like some of the tech cards uh, will be pretty successful in this tournament, at least if, um, if today uh, has a similar showing as yesterday. Yeah, but we saw yesterday, though, the... Who was it? It was Demigod... He didn't have that many tech cards, but his entire lineup was focused around one single goal, which was kind of like knocking out Hunter and Handlock, yeah. which were countered at the exact same time by the same tech cards. Whereas like people that just had a single tech card thrown in there being like, this will probably be good against those matchups, didn't have the same amount of success. Yeah. So there's... We'll have to see. Yeah. Yeah. To give a little bit of a history of how these guys qualified, Raynad uh, made it through the Legendary Series uh, regular season week number three. Uh, he was one of the invited players for that week, and he was one of the uh, most successful players. He uh, 3 0 a few opponents. He had one of the highest win rates throughout uh, his week. Uh, Roger made it through one of the Legendary Series weeks through um, the Open, but he ended up losing. So he came back for the Redemption Tournament and actually won Redemption Tournament number three. Uh, so he's played actually quite a few games to get where he is, since originally he had to make it through the like 250-plus player Open then played through the Legendary Series, and then played through the Redemption Week. So uh, he's had quite a long road to get here. And I'm really looking forward to see how he's going to do. Because it was really cool to sit down and talk with him. We had the translator with him um, when we conducted the interview. And it was really cool to see some of the things that he said and some of the things that differed from 
not even just in Hearthstone, but just the the tournament scene in in Taiwan compared to abroad since Roger's gotten to travel quite a bit. We also talked about how uh, Roger was just involved in just a crazy amount of tournaments recently. He's really, um, you know, just spent all of his time trying to get into the tournament scene. And, and I mean, we, we have him here, so uh, it, is, it is doing very well for him. Um, Rain had, um, strikingly like Trump, has just been doing really well recently. You know, yeah. been in the Hearthstone scene for a long time, uh, been doing pretty well throughout, but uh, more so recently. And, uh, well, Trump, Trump did okay. Yeah, so far. Pretty good. If I had to, like, say, like, an analysis, like, on Rain Ed's tournament performance, it seems like a lot of times he focuses on a lot of other things in Hearthstone mm -hmm. rather than just tournaments. And then sometimes he just focuses on tournaments for a little while because he's got, like, he's Rain Ed. He's huge. He's got so much going on for him. Yeah. And when he focuses on tournaments, he's definitely a force to be reckoned with. So I wouldn't be surprised since he's been doing well lately that he does very well in this tournament. We also talked about how uh, the Conquest format kind of takes away some of the necessary preparation a little bit and without bands it takes it away even more yeah so how much preparation do you think is really required for something like this if you want to take it as seriously as you can uh, seriously as you can um well you've seen like the different approaches you can do the approach where you have to bully a deck out which yeah. is going to require you to make three completely new non-standard decks or then there's the approach where you can just play the three standard best ladder decks and then just throw in some tech cards it's worked for some other players. Yeah, so it's worked. But we've seen it work both examples of it. And yeah. uh, one of them is a lot harder to do. <laughs> it's a lot harder to make three completely new concepts to bully. Do you feel it's deck. that much more effective to do that, though? Or it seems about the same. It's about the same. Yeah. yeah. So it's not that much more effective, but it's like five times as much preparation. Whereas just throwing in like a Harrison Jones, because you know there's going to be Warriors and Hunters, yeah. into the most common ladder decks takes like five minutes. So yeah. you got to prepare a little bit, though. Um, you gotta know how to play the deck, sure. Okay. But the actual like tweaking and making the decks mm -hmm. does not take very much time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the players are ready, but we're dealing with a, a small tech issue, so it's going to be uh, just a few more moments before we're able to actually jump into that match. Uh, but uh, across the the past day, uh, for day one, we actually had a little segment going on called Froden versus the World. Yeah. And uh, yesterday, I believe we ended the day with a one to one score with Froden versus the world. And uh, what that is, is basically the players or some of the Hearthstone players that have come to watch the land finals uh, have the opportunity to actually challenge Dan. And so far, he's he's actually been having some troubles, but we're actually going to throw it over to Fro Dan, who's standing by over by the, the player area. Yeah, I'm one and one. I sat here all day and I managed to win one series and lose one series. That's... Uh... That's definitely the story and narrative we're going to go. I'm here over in the fireside gathering area where there's eight PCs free for people to use. So if you're uh, interested over in the crowd area or if you're watching at home, you realize that Burbank's not far away. Come on down and play me for some packs. Uh, yesterday, we had a lot of fun. We met a lot of the fans. Some of the players were sitting here, too, giving some coaching or building fun decks and or even trying hard and showing people how to actually play some Hearthstone and climb the ladder. It's a really fun environment, so we encourage you guys to play. Uh, yesterday, I think the highlight of my day was I got to use Windspeaker, and I killed somebody for about 29 damage on turn six. That was awesome. Um, so I hope you guys are enjoying it so far, but I'll be here all day, so make sure to come on by, say hello, and... Play some Hearthstone. That's what we're here for to do. So I'm going to give it back over to TJ. I think they're almost ready. And uh, hope, uh, I hope you guys enjoy the first match. I think it's going to be a really good one. Roger versus Reyna is going to be fun. So don't steal all the fun because I want to – if you guys aren't doing a good job commentating, I'm going to go over there and do it for you. Yeah? What do you think? Sounds pretty good. Hmm? Yeah. I wouldn't mind Frodan here. Yeah. Frodan's a uh, – I guess Frodan's yeah. pretty He's cool. He's pretty cool. Yeah, that's right. But, yeah, the tech issues have been resolved, so we should be moments away from jumping into that first match. Uh, between Rain Ed and Roger. And yeah. Group A, the, total, the entirety of Group A is uh, Rain Ed, Roger, Oskaka, and Double Os. So who do you guys think is going to come out on top? I'm actually pretty excited about this this first match. Um, you know, both players have been doing really well recently. And uh, I think, you know, as we talked about, they're both kind of like peaking right now. They're really spending a lot of time um, trying to prepare and do well for these tournaments. So I think this match is going to dictate a lot. I kind of have to root for Oskaka to uh, take the second match, though. Uh, all right. Yeah, I think Oskaka <laughs> is going to be favored in the second match. He's been performing really good all the time, and he's just mm -hmm. really active on both NA and EU ladder. And 
So I really think he's going to have patron down. Even yeah. though he's not like known as like a patron player, I've never actually seen him play it before. But just the amount of time he puts into the game, I got to imagine he's going to have a really solid performance. And I think as far as Roger versus Reynad, off the first match is going to decide which one of them is probably going to be more favored to take the other slot in the group. All right, well, we are jumping into game number one of the first match of the day. Roger on the Warrior, and Reynad is going to be playing what looks like Hybrid Hunter with the Glaive Zuka, but uh, could just be more mid rangey, especially with Lothab in there. How does this match play? I mean, we talked about these two being the dominant decks. Now, when they, when they clash against each other, it doesn't seem too one side in any direction, does it? No, it's pretty 50 50. It's fairly up in the air. If uh, the hunter is able to put on enough pressure to force the warrior to use their whirlwinds, use their uh, the combo, combo pieces. pieces, yeah. Because yeah. if the warrior ever runs out of card, the warrior is dead. The warrior needs combos to draw cards. He needs Acolyte plus something to trigger the Acolyte to draw off the Acolyte, more than one card. And he needs something to trigger Battle Rage to like damage his minions so he can draw more than one card. So. The Hunter is basically trying to pressure him into a position where he's unable to draw more cards and refuel. Now, the Glaive Zuka seems like a pretty good pressure card. Why do you think Reynad threw that away so quickly? Uh, he really needs a 2-drop or a 1-drop to go with it. It yeah. doesn't work very good on its own. And he whiffed. Yeah, he whiffed. <laughs> yeah, That's that pretty a pretty rough. Hard whiff. Yeah, it's not the, not the prettiest hand in the world. Yeah, at this stage in the game, when you use the coin, you often have to think about at least the next three turns in terms of uh, curves. Yeah, I like using the coin here, though, because you got two, two, and two. So really just getting that loot hoarder out there, cycling it as soon as possible. It also challenges knife juggler, so you don't have to take that to the face and take three damage. I think it's also a big deal uh, because he has the three drop. Yeah. If you didn't have the three drop, I think uh, saving the coin may have been a better choice just to have the... Uh, yeah. Uh, the double two instead of the three from the ground. Yeah. Sure. This is really important here. Reynad actually, uh, he didn't have any other plays and he top decked Tonic Creeper, but instead of playing it right away, he actually took a moment to pause and mouse over a couple of his other cards to sort of give the illusion that he had more plays than just Tonic Creeper. Because it, it, in the long run, it could end up making Roger make inefficient plays if he thinks that Reynad's going to be applying more pressure than he actually will be. He's a very easy bow killing him. Yeah. Definitely got to get rid of that as soon as possible. Otherwise, they start stacking a lot of armor. And you do need to kill them before they make a billion patrons. <laughs> yeah. A billion. Yeah, Hunter is really effective. And the reason it's so is because it's very hard to remove all the little things they play. Like there's multiple creatures in one. Mm -hmm. But the Grim Patron, they, they multiply off of those creatures. Yeah. <laughs> they kill all of them. Was this a kill command target? I do kind of like the kill command here, just because when else are you going to really use kill command in this match? And that way you get to save the bow since you don't have really time to re-equip, unless you're re-equipping this turn, of course. Yeah. So, lines up really good with Belcher. What do you think about Unleash? Unleash? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like using Unleash here. Uh, a better spot later. Yeah, usually against Patron, if they get their dream Patron turn, you're going to need that Unleash to be able to threaten to race them. Because oftentimes they use their Whirlwind effects and stuff to trigger the Patrons, and then they don't really have much to clean up the Unleash the Hounds. Or they have enough Patrons that you can actually just go all face and start racing at that point. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I think the Kill Command would have resulted in a better turn, but if you use the Kill Command, then you don't have that additional burst. Yeah. So it seems like Reynad is just going for the sneaky hey, kill. Yeah, it seems like it. He's already got the Unleash the Hounds, so it makes sense. Seems inefficient to use the Glaive Zuka, but he realizes that he's probably not going to have many opportunities over the next couple turns to develop it, since he's got like double Sludge Belcher in his hand and uh, even Unleash the Hounds Kill Command for a possible turn six play. So it's um, yeah. goes ahead and develops it now, even though he most likely wastes that the extra one damage because it's not on like a charge creature. But oh, right now both players have close to nothing and they're just trying to very desperately keep something on the board. Yeah, neither player got the dream at all. And double inner age back to back is really weak. He does have ways to utilize the inner age with the athlete of pain, but yeah, that's definitely not optimal. Though you don't really want to just cycle it, because that's all you're basically doing when you use it on Acolyte of pain is just removing it from your deck and drawing. The thing is, card. you might be forced in that position even next turn, though. Yeah, and that's exactly what the hunter wants to do. And he's not really pressuring him, more so that the Warrior's just not drawing anything to play. Yeah. I don't think we've seen a Huffer. Um, I think we saw a Huffer. One Huffer? Yeah, we saw one. When I was casting, we saw one Huffer, and it got, like, uh, it got buffed plus one, plus one somehow. I don't remember how. 
is a 5-3 Huffer. Wow. Oh, it was a banana, that's a, right. A, a banana? Fuck the Huffer. Yeah, it was a web, web spinner oh, okay. into yeah. Mukla. Mukla died. Oh, Mukla Mukla's played. And the, I forgot buffed by the banana. Okay. Yeah, that was the Hunter Mirror Trump versus Koyuki. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. That was the only Huffer, I think. And it was a pretty irrelevant Huffer, from what I remember. Oh. Those are words that you don't hear very yeah. often. <laughs> yeah. I think it was a Huffer into like a taunted high main or something, from what I remember. Ouch. Alright, I'm finally gonna draw that card off of Accolade of Pain. It seems like a pretty rough hand though. It's just very reactive. He doesn't have things to do to really apply pressure besides the Frothing Berserker, but no Warsong Commander to give a charge. Not many effects besides just the Inner Rages to make it do more damage. I don't know, he's got a lot of damage now. Yeah. 14 damage out of hand from the warrior. What do you think he could have drawn to, uh... to maybe play over the frothing there? Because he chose to play the frothing after dealing some of the damage. Uh, I think he just did that to ensure that the frothing wasn't down to 3 health, but... Uh, for 3 mana? I wonder. And he could play like Armor Smith or Loot Hoarder, another Accolade of Pain. Mm -hmm. Something like that. So it's going to come down to a race. And since Roger has. Yeah, Roger's winning right now. <laughs> a ridiculous yeah. amount of damage coming from his hand with the Grom double in a rage. Raynad doesn't. Well, all of that damage can be stopped by a single freezing trip. Yeah, that's true. Or a Houndmaster. Yeah, any taunt too. Sorry. Yeah. He's got ways to get through it, but it's really inefficient. Yeah, now there's a taunt and a freezing. Two taunts Two and ta a freezing. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be hard to make that Grom connect. It's time for some Grim Patrons. Yeah, definitely. I don't even know if Grim Patrons are gonna help him much, because you'd have to have. Well, no, because he's got both inner rages, so. Uh, he'd be able to get a bunch, but no Warsong Commander to be able to bounce him off these the, the slime and the 1 1 Hound here. And again, like you talked about earlier, if he's having to use his combo pieces like Whirlwind and Inner Rage to he is, he does clear have the board. To. He yeah. does have to. Well, he could use, like, maybe Execute. He's using Execute. Oh, he's using Execute on yeah. that. Yeah. I was thinking about trying to Execute the taunts. Basically, he feels like he's under so much pressure. He is under. He's going to be under so much pressure for a couple more turns, too, because he has to find a way to develop a creature, proc the Freezing Trap. And then do enough damage that Grom Inner Rage actually kills him after the Freezing Trap is proc. Yeah. But the thing is, I think Huffer would be the worst animal companion here. Because it's the only one that can actually deal with immediately. It's always Misha. Misha's excellent. That's the always best one. Misha. Yeah, that's the best one in this situation. Yeah. Um, oh. You still can't really set much up. He still needs to beat this freezing trap somehow. Yeah. Without drawing a minion, it's going to be really tough. I guess next turn he can just proc it with Grom and then armor, and then he has lethal set up. Mm -hmm. Well, he won't, because there's the, because there's the second freezing trap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To his knowledge, he'll have lethal set up. Yeah. I'll just it's pretty good just because it's pretty sticky. It won't even. Um, at least something will be left behind from the death bite swing if that's what he decides to go with. No, there's, there's no lethal. It's 16. Uh, one off. Yeah, it's one off. Yeah. Yeah. My bad. He's going to swing here. Because he has the inner rage to enrage it again. So just in case it happens to be like snakes or something, might as well hit for 10, right? Also sets up for the shredder to trade with the loot hoarder. Pretty good. He sort of has to trade in to the loot hoarder here. Oh, man, that's rough. Well, he Maybe. might think there's no way he can enrage his Grom now. That's true. He's been holding on to that inner rage for a long time now. I kind of like the face hit. Like, doing 8 to the warrior here is pretty big. And, like, how do you take 13 with a freeze trap up? I, I can't think of it either. With only Just, with a 10 mana Grom and yeah. only one inner rage left, I don't think it's possible. Yeah. You face hit is the game winning play. Yeah. Definitely face hit and just freezing trap the loot order. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's it's kind of bad to freeze trap a two drop, but at, at least it won't draw. Yeah, and you're setting up lethal, probably. Get yeah. There, fight, 
on board anyway. Yeah, that's true. He's gonna have, yeah. With the hero power plus the six damage on board, since the loot hoarder is getting frozen, he'll have to trade in. Oh no, he wouldn't even be able to do that. Oh, the Belcher off the wow. top. Wow! What a lifesaver. Well, he doesn't die as it, as it stands. Now that he has the Belcher. But he, yeah, you gotta ground the 2 1. So if he Belchers this turn. Nah, then he still dies. No, no, no. You, you can interrange the 2 1 and ground the 4 2. Yeah. I think it's now he has lethal. <laughs> Raiden has to get something really good out of the Shredder to stay alive. Like a Noia Trap. Not that. That's, gonna do, That's gonna do it. Wow. Wow. Super close game. Gonna get in yeah. with the slime. It wasn't the most. For the lethal. It wasn't the most exciting game since they both had just kind of like crap draws and it was just like. That's, that's okay. Grindy. Yeah. I, I, I kind of like it. There's, there's more strategy when that happens because yeah. you, have, you have to work with napkins, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah it's more of like a, a value game at that point. You have to like take each creature the furthest. Yeah, like if you have the perfect draw, the game just plays itself. But mm -hmm. with, with terrible draws from both sides, there's a lot of it's the most exciting way to play it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, there's no grim pay. There's no combos whatsoever from either yeah. player. It's just junk. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it seems like Raynette got a little bit worse on the junk meter because uh, he did. I, I, th I think he played great. Yeah. Seemed solid. Yeah. But uh, that one turn where he had the freezing trap up and then he top decked the other freezing trap. That's just bad luck. Yeah. If that was any minion, then he's but probably going to have enough pressure. That was to high any card. Yeah. Any card besides freezing trap. Yeah. Then he's probably able to pressure him out of the he's game. Probably going to win. Yeah. If he drew high main, like any of those last like six turns, it yeah. would have just been pretty much game. That's but, how it is sometimes. Yeah. Roger's going to take a 1-0 lead in the series. So not out of the woods yet. I'm sure Raynad won't find too much trouble getting one with that Hunter. Yeah, still still anyone's game. I mean, yeah. these, these are the two dominant decks. Mm -hmm. One of them has to win, but the other one's still going to win sometime. Yeah. Probably. Exactly. The, the real story is going to be like the other deck that's not The third deck. Yeah. <laughs> third deck. What, um, do you remember the third deck that wasn't... I don't know if we. I don't know if we saw that. We and saw we it did, very I was, briefly I before the attention. before okay. the tech issues happened. So, yeah. um, we'll once see we it know again, their next yeah, decks, we'll see the matchup play. Yeah, we'll, we'll see it see. in just a second here. Anyway, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, here we go. Actually, uh, we got Mage versus No Hunter on Roger's side. He's got Warlock Druid. Mm -hmm. Even though uh, Roger might be ahead on the points here, um, he might not be too favored after that. Yeah, um, I feel like Patron Warrior, Mid Range Hunter and mage are all generally pretty good against druid as long yeah. as it's not a freeze mage yeah it's probably temple mage yeah um some kind of the token temple mage with like mechanical yetis flame mm -hmm. wakers and those are very good against druid very good rain has played a lot of different mages too you yeah. can't really count out really any variation yeah i've seen him play freeze i've seen him play tempo i've seen him play mech mage flood mage yeah flood mage some weird mages yeah <laughs> yeah and none of them too terrible. Yeah, none of them bad. Especially yeah. when you don't know what's coming. It adds a lot to it. All right, well, he's going to queue up the Hunter this time around. Roger's going to go with the Druid, try and pick up one with that. But as you mentioned, this is probably going to be the toughest deck for him to find a win with. Oh, well, you got the Shade. Just need a little bit of help. And no, no help at no all. No help at all. I mean, he could still draw an Innervate. Yeah, it's still not much from Raynad's side. Like, that is still a junk opener. Yeah, it's not very good. Druid yesterday in day one did not have much success at all. It had an abysmal win rate. I think the Druid, one of the only games that Druid won was in the mirror matchup. So one, at least one Druid had to win. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm not actually surprised when the two top decks in the meta both beat Druid. Kind of makes sense. Yeah. Because you got to think about in conquest lineups the bullying strategy all the time. So you're like, all right, the two main best decks in the format, I'm gonna bring those, and they both beat Druid. So what's another deck that maybe I just throw in there that happens to also beat Druid? Yeah. <laughs> and then Mage if, Rogue. <laughs> and if someone happens to bring Druid, you're just insanely favored against them. Right. Yeah. That was actually uh, Raynat's thread quite a few tournaments in the past. He's always like bullied Druid because it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of things to beat Druid. Yeah. It's always been the deck that people have sort of gone to because of the... It used to be a lot more consistent than it is now because there's more decks that beat it, but it was also a comfort pick for a lot of players because they were used to playing it so much mm -hmm. because of how consistent of a deck it was. So even so when it was It's also a deck best, that like, even though it gets bullied a lot, it has a chance against basically anything with like the yeah. god draw. Yeah, you can yeah. always double innervate out an Emperor Thorsen. Yeah. 
Even the double shade here, like, that's pretty, pretty nasty. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely anybody's game at this point. So we haven't really seen some of the cards that sort of indicate that it's the really hybrid hunter. We saw Glaivezuka, but there's I don't we think we've Belcher. seen. That's the key that shows that yeah. it's mid range. Mid range, yeah. yeah. Abusive sergeants could sort of go either way, but yeah, definitely um, way. Glaivezuka as well. But yeah, Belcher's definitely, and Doctor Boom also. A lot of times the yeah. the, the hybrid Do you hunter like top the side of high here? Duggies. Uh, take, take a one and three, kill Sylvanas with the doggy hunter's mark. I don't think it's bad. How else are you dealing with Sylvanas, right? Well, you either deal with Sylvanas that way or just ignore Sylvanas, which often turns into a disastrous situation. Yeah. Like, You're this is a scary druid board. They have three minions on the field. Savage Roar is already stacking up to be a lot of damage, so your choices are either you got to race them down before turn nine, because if they have like any minions in the field yeah. on turn nine, you're dead. Yeah. Or you have to kill everything before turn nine. So you got to make that's the not happening. Yeah, it, it's not happening here. So I think I like the race plan a little bit more, but you don't have the hand or the tools really to race that much. He's got kill command, but like no charge minions. He doesn't have a weapon to refresh after this eagle horn bow is gone. Yeah, I, don't, I think I don't. I wouldn't mind honestly, like freezing trap houndmaster and then just go face and pray that you can kill him before turn nine. But I can see merits to trying to control the board as well. Oh, he got the hound. Okay. Yeah, this is a good play because if you get another hound, you, you keep up a nice freeze. Yeah, it turned out really well. No, one and three. One and three. Now he's able to keep there up was, his bow yeah, as there well. Was, there was one and three options there where it would have turned out not really well at all. Yeah. If you sold a sludge belcher, that was pretty much game. That was yeah. game. That yeah. was okay. GG. Oh, you can freezing trap the Druid of the Claw instead. Seems like a good option. Yeah, because these shades are already. Ooh. Are their shades well, if you are put already it in taunt, you can maybe freeze trap a boom bot. Ah, not bad. That's quite a few turns away, though. Next turn. It's, yeah, it's just next turn. Well, You've he seen has to play. He has to play the Doctor Boom, and then he has to wait till the next turn to proc the Freezing Trap. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So he can't attack with anything until then, if that's his plan. I think his decision to taunt it up is heavily influenced by the fact that uh, one Raynad like didn't go for the aggressive line, so he has more time, so he can go with this line. And two, Raynad used the Unleash the Hounds, and it's very common that there's only one Unleash the Hounds in mid range hunter. Mm -hmm. I think I like. Um... Just swipe Press something. Battle. I don't like getting throws in there on the shade. It just kind of makes it useless. Yeah. We gotta freeze something, and I don't know if he can wait a whole nother turn before he does it. And I think he wants to preserve the taunt because of the damage that it blocks since he's even, already even at still. Long. I think if you're getting frozen here, you you want to play the swipe because you want it. You want the boom bot to hit something that you freeze. Because if you just play Dr. Boom and pass here, there's a chance if, you're if dead. If you play Dr. Boom, you, I think you do pass. Yeah. Does he have lethal setup if he plays Dr. Boom and passes? Assuming Boom is a two-shade 17 survive. damage if he only has an Owl. Owl is just lethal on board. Even Hunter's Mark is if he has a little bit of damage. And I think that is. Yeah, he's lethal with double kill command. Yeah, because he can just get through, right? He doesn't have a beast. But Doesn't matter. He uh, yeah. he's got uh, yeah, he's twelve got damage on board, fifteen with the weapon. Yeah, double command just kills power. the druid to the claw. Yeah. Yep. But you would you wouldn't want to do that. I think you want to do some combination with the. Uh, no, you can't do it with the one one. Hmm. I mean, it's just lethal. You yeah. just double kill command. The <laughs> double kill command hero power. Yeah, oh, it's you lethal. Go for the PM. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. PM. Of course. Gotcha. I don't You're know. You're thinking on another level than us. In tournaments, it's just like. The cleanest way is usually just best. Uh, can he do it now? I'm sure. Yeah, you can just bow it and then run the Belcher in. It's yeah, the as long thing. as he splits up his damage. As long as he puts exactly six damage into the uh, yeah. Druid the Claw here, he's got it. So, all right, Raynad is going to find a win with the honor and tie up the series one to one. Yeah. So Roger tried that greedy line to try and beat the freeze trap there, mm -hmm. and uh, really got punished with it since Raynet had both kill commands. Yeah. Or at least yeah. some way to get through the taunt. Well, I mean, from his side of things, um, it's kind of unusual there. You get double kill command, and yeah, like one beast, one kill command is much more likely. And you mm -hmm. play around that, kind yeah. of. Yeah, he played around that. That wouldn't have killed him it sometimes. Kind of. Because <laughs> the boom bots. Yeah, the boom bots could have still killed him. Yeah. Just owl an owl would have killed him. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if that's a. Uh... 
It's like a seventy-five percent of hunter decks probably run owl, and it's like mm-hmm. a one of in mid-range hunter. Yeah, if they do run it. Mm-hmm. So, and you already saw the hunter's mark, which is the one of too. So, I I think it's reasonable not to be too scared, and it's a matchup where you're unfavored. So taking risks is mm-hmm. how you win. Like you have to take risks. Yeah, like if if you took that risk and it paid off, he probably would, would have just won off the savage roar. That's true. Yep. He had a ridiculous amount of damage. He would have had a seven damage shade and a six damage shade the following turn. So plus two on each. Yeah, that's yeah, a lot. That's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> that basically just kills you by itself. Yeah. So all right. Well, Roger still has the uh, warlock and still has to find one with the druid. Rain out on the mm-hmm. other hand has mage, which we've yet to see what type of mage it is. Man is and warrior. warrior himself. So he's gonna queue up the warrior. And Roger, once again, is going to throw out the Druid. And this is, is going to be the deck that's sort of a liability for him in this matchup. It's kind of rough. It's going to be... Now, what, what if it's a Control Warrior? Control Warrior doesn't do very well against Druid. No, Control Warrior is awful against Druid. Like, not as bad as it was pre-GVG, since you have things like Shield Maiden for that extra life gain. Yeah. But uh, still, still not the best matchup. Uh, you can't really deal with Piloted Shredder very effectively, and you cannot deal with them just comboing you for 14 or 22. Now, Teacher was mentioning that um, Raynad getting here is basically on the back of Grim Patron Warrior, but yep. so happened to be the first time he played it. Mm-hmm. See, seems like knowing Raynad, he'd probably just play it here again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there it is. Yeah, he said uh, Raynad, of course, known for having a full golden collection of the cards that he plays. And he said right before, the, or halfway through the tournament, he had to. He realized that he had to craft the Golden Patrons. Because he'd only played the deck twice before he actually won his week. I mean, there's some cards you just get a lot of value for being Golden. Like Golden Patron, it's not just the Golden Patron, it's the six more you make. It's very good. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Very true. Very valuable card. Mm-hmm. Definitely agree. But it's like the Imp Master, you know? Golden Imp Master, not impressive. But then you get Golden Imps. I miss the days when... In Master was actually played in like Token Druid. This Druid hand, by the way, is uh, looking a lot better. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> yeah, looking a lot better than the last game. Innervate Shade into Wild Growth, that's uh, not too bad. Yeah. He just, just needs to draw one big threat. Yeah, an Ancient of Lore would be pretty sick. It'd be disgusting. He could actually Ancient of Lore next turn. Yeah, or refill his hand. Dr. Boom wouldn't be bad. Yeah. You know, just about anything. Emperor Thor's hand could be pretty good. Uh, I don't know about that. It doesn't really hit much. It hits a force of nature. Yeah. It's not the worst. Keep bringing an Accolade on curve against Patron Warrior is really, really good. Because yeah. Druid's a really high pressure deck, and you're denying a lot of their early game draw that gets them towards their combos. But he's already got his combos. So both players drawing exceptionally well. Yeah. Well, that's why we're seeing both players play pretty quickly here. Now, just the Grim Patron without charge against uh, some classes is still oh, effective enough. <laughs> there it is. That's the boomster. Well, hello there. Yeah, against Druid, oftentimes you don't need the charge. You just make four Grim Patrons and the game's over. Yeah. But with a Dr. Boom on the field already, the might thing be is, a like if, if you get an execute here, you still do that. Yeah. yeah. You see, see Raynad actually roll his eyes after that one. Because mm-hmm. that's tough to deal with. Innervate Shade into Wild Growth into Innervate Dr. Boom. I think you just go off and make the patrons here. Yep. And if some of them get hit by bombs, then maybe you won't hit for much and make some more patrons. Yeah. That's the dream. The hope. That's one of the best hands that you could ever have against Grim Patron. Warrior. Because he had Innervate Shade into Wild Growth into Keeper on Curve against the Acolyte. In into Dr. Dr. Boom. Boom. Yeah, and the patron still has a chance because it's that strong of a deck. Yeah, yeah. What now? Do you think you maybe go for a kill onto Dr. Boom here? Because yeah. the looter is dying anyway. It's like two face damage. Hmm. Depends if you run like Big Game Hunter or if you run... Well, uh... you can actually choose to... Oh, no. No. You can't clear that at all. You can put the damage on the Boom with the loot hoarder because that's more important than the face damage, I think, and then kill the shade. <laughs> Wouldn't mind that. I definitely would like to see some patrons. Especially with Warsong Commander as the pick up there. If you live, it's really good. Uh, looks like he wants to play Belch here. Alright. I can understand being kind of defensive here. You just took 7 to the face, but... Yeah. Now he just lost the whirlwind effect. 
Yeah, with the... Three more to the face! Ten to face. That's rough. Oh, Dark Room's pretty good. So is that card. You know what, Crip? Let me go ahead and agree with you. Dr. Boom is pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Another patron. Yeah, I really feel like playing patron last turn was uh, gonna result in a better better ending. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, it's really hard to get it down now. Because he yeah. might just be dead if he grim patron in a rage whirlwinds. Then yeah, he's gonna have four patrons, but he's not gonna even be able to clear off the shade. So no, I think he uses in a rage and on the shade on the shade. Yeah. And just get two grim patrons on the board. Yeah, then they just get cleared by the druid of the claw and. All you need is a wrath at that point. You, you, you won't lose both your patrons. Well, one to the druid of the claw, what and then no. one to any removal spell. Yeah. yeah. Or keeper of the grove for another druid of the claw. Is there a charge. better play though? Like I, st I still think that's it. Yeah, yeah it's true. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Everyone, get in mm. here. Everyone's not really getting in there. No. no. They could have gotten in the last turn. Yeah, I guess he just felt like he was under too <laughs> wow. much pressure. <laughs> Holy! Well, if you do that, you're leaving patrons up, though, so that's kind of scary. For the wild. All right, he dealt with the first wave. It wasn't really that big of a wave, but he dealt with it. Interesting he values the coin hero power there. For the two damage, you could have saved the coin for possibly playing scenarios. Mm -hmm. Seems fine. Well, it still looks like Roger's in a pretty dominating position. He's got him down to nine health. He's got plenty of time with Ancient of Lore to draw him into more more answers. What do you think about just the YOLO force on commander here? Seems better than execute. <laughs> The one thing that he might have going for him is if uh, Roger plays Scenarius with the Tutus, then he might be able to force on Commander and bounce some Grim Patrons in, but that's about his only hope. I think this is where not having the coin is bad, because you really want Ancient Lore into like a wrath. Yeah, and Button turned green so he didn't draw into Innervate or anything like that, so... No. Well, he does have a clear here while developing patrons. He draws Despite as well, so his patrons live. He could be in an okay spot. Yeah. So do you play Scenarius? No, I think you have to get rid of that patron. You have Warson Commander and patron right now. Yeah. It's pretty scary. That's, yeah. See how fast that swipe hit him? Yeah. 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 That means there was no <laughs> other choice. Roger plays fast as it is, though. Uh, he's, uh, I guess when you play that many games, you start developing a habit of playing faster. Well, you can enter Rage here. Getting rid of that Lothab, I guess. Play around Savage Rock. Well, this is looking pretty bad for Raina. His patrons are gone, and that's one of the best tools. He's got an empty hand. He's on. He's at seven health. Even if he draws like a battle rage, he'll only be able to get a couple cards out of it. No, he needs an acolyte into like a battle rage. Yeah, yeah. And now he's barely going to be able to get through this. And even if he does, he's still dead to just about everything. Frothing Berserker is not going to help him at all. Uh, no. That looks like some oh. help. Yeah, he gets to kill the the trees. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot about the Warsong Commander on the board. And can kill uh, Scenarius if he wants. I think he plays the lead Scenarius up. To actually, maybe win this game. Yeah, just start racing. Yeah. You have the inner rage for Gromash if you get him off the top. So. so how much damage does he do? Oh no, I think the inner rage is gonna. Didn't get played on the other tree. Oh, to save the war song. Yeah. Hmm. It doesn't need to be alive for the for I think to still have charge. No. But yeah, but. You get enough damage, yeah. So that's 10 damage this turn, but then there's nothing off the top that can kill your opponent. Unless you run Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> he... And he needs one damage to kill Raynad. Well, I guess... Wait, off. couldn't... 
Couldn't Rayan do one more face damage if he traded in the War Song and then enraged the Frothing? Yes. Wow. Getting greedy. Wants to draw into lethal. Seems reasonable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, there's a lot of outs. Ancient Lore's not one of them, though. Now he has to trade in the Scenarius. He could have kept that thing alive. If he had wrath the Fronty Berserker instead. Yeah, but now he can in. heal himself and, and he's basically going to win this game. Does he need to heal himself? There's no one card that can kill him. Yeah. Firebat said it's like, unless he runs Leroy Jenkins, which is pretty doubtful. Yeah, the chances of Roger finding lethal here have got to be really, really good. A single Savage Roar, force in, second Force Nature if he runs one. Battle Rage, a couple turns too late. This, this is kind of the problem with this deck when you don't have cards. Yeah. You top deck Whirlwind. Yeah. For your whole turn. There it is. Alrighty, well, Roger is going to take game number two. But most importantly, he's going to take a win with his Druid deck. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a huge, huge. He's, we said it earlier, sometimes Druids just win. Yeah, he had... And there's not much you that, can do. Yeah, that was a ridiculous draw to yeah. start. That was disgusting. That felt like every time I queue up against Druid and Ladder. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Raynette's probably feeling that exact way right now. Mm -hmm. Every time I face Druid. Well, I, I don't know. Raynette just got up for the tournament, so I think, I think he's got a decent night's sleep. I think <laughs> I think there's some more, uh, more, like more terrible things that he can take until he's really in the salt mode. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. we'll see in a few games if that happens. Yeah. We'll case. see if he loses the next one to a ridiculous draw as well. Yeah. How he's going to be feeling. It's yeah. uh, what, what was the last deck? Mage from Rained and Roger has Warlock. 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 That's, yeah. right. That's right. And probably Handlock is his yeah. favorite deck by far. Yep. So. Okay. That's. I mean, you said Grim Patron kind of take anything, which it can. Yeah. But uh, I'm still saying Handlock is uh, one of the harder things to take. Yeah, Handlock's pretty difficult to take. You're going to need to try and set up like a charge frothing turn most mm -hmm. of the time, which can be pretty difficult under the pressure of 8 8s. Yeah. So, yeah. And Raynet didn't He's seem tough. to have any sort of tech cards that were. Um, helping with the matchup with Handlock. Yeah, no. He's running too much in the deck, though. I mean, he's he's played some of the Grim Patron deck, but he hasn't really gone through much of it. Well, looking at the deck, it looks just like the deck that he used when he qualified, which was uh, Just Saiyan's List, which um, ran the Sludge Belchers, mm -hmm. and no tech cards, like no Brawl, no Harrison, no uh, BGH. Mm -hmm. uh, he could have changed it, because it's been quite a while since that's happened. Um, like, almost a month, maybe three weeks, so... Uh, he could have changed it, but yeah. from what I've seen, it looks almost identical to that deck that he I also that he wonder, won. back to that turn where we thought just playing a Grim Patron by itself was pretty good. Yeah. I wonder how the game would have played out if that happened. It would have been wildly different. Yeah, it would have yeah, definitely yeah. been different. Because then it's on Roger's turn to decide, is he going to go for trying to clear all the Grim Patrons, or is he going to try and just engage the race head on? So. Yeah. So even though Roger had a crazy draw, there were still opportunities for Raynad to make plays to... Yeah better his position in the game, and maybe even have a chance to win. So there was a moment later on in the game where Roger was a sort of top deck, top decking for lethal, and there was a few opportunities, especially if Raynad was able to contest the board earlier on. He might have been in a better position moving into those couple turns. So there was definitely opportunities, but he's got to sort of forget about that game for now because he's got a tough road ahead of him. He has uh, to mage. win two times in a row with Handlock. I think most mage decks are pretty good against most Warlock decks. Yeah. Definitely, uh, except for Zoo. Yeah, a lot of mage decks can struggle with Zoo, like Tempo Mage, Mech Mage. They really just get outvalued by the Warlock Hero Power and all the value minions. Yeah. So, yeah, they can get run over. But uh, Freeze Mage beats all forms of Warlock, and uh, it's one of the reasons why yeah. Mech Mage sort of fell off was because Zoo came back with yeah. like Imp Gang Boss. Like as soon as Imp Gang Boss was released and people started to play Zoo again, Mech Mage just disappeared. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not completely gone, but... No, but compared to where it was before that happened, yeah. where Mech Mage was almost in every single player's lineup. Yeah. Um, I think Mech, Mech Mage was, um, was kind of fun at the start of GBG, but after a while, oh, yeah, after when everyone the was playing, playing it, it got so boring. It got pretty yeah. boring. Yeah. It was cool for a while, though. I, I, I didn't mind it at the start. The that old plays crackings. that people used to roll their eyes over were the crazy mech warper shenanigans and now it's all yeah, well you had you patrons. had one thing with the crazy mech warper shenanigans you also had like you know you 
guy plays like Goblin Blast. Goblin Mage and Blast kills, like, Mage. Three different creatures. Or, or just kills one 4 4. Yeah. Just very casually. 4 4. Yeah. Like uh, an Ezra Drake. Okay. Yeah. You've never had your Ezra Drake Goblin Blast Mage to death? Maybe. I don't, I don't I play have. that much construction. Yeah. So. I'll admit it. I played a lot of Mech Mage. All right. Well, there's that tonight. This is basically gives me information. Well, it's Tempo Mage. Mana Worm, right? Yeah. yeah. And Mana Worm, Ezra Drake. So some sort of tempo mage, maybe machine gun mage, or just regular tempo mage. Yeah, Raynad seemed to really like the super, um, like token spell heavy tempo mage, where he ran Toshly and double mechanical Yeti. Wow. So um, it has a chance to just completely card, blow up. Yeah, it's a good card. It's never going to be a bad card. No. And this deck being able to utilize the the one mana spells is really good. Even just the deck itself synergizes with the spells because you have Antonidas as well. So it's not only Flame Waker, you have Antonidas also. The Finicky Cloakfield can win you games. Yeah. The Emergency Coolant is a huge tempo card. With the Watcher already down from Roger, this Mirror Entity has gained quite a bit of value. I'm actually surprised he chose the Watcher instead of Dark Bomb. Yeah, me as well. Like, normally you want to hold on to your Watcher to use it to proc this Mirror Entity. I think it had to do with and the Shadow I think Shadow generally frame. you don't want a Sorcerer Apprentice. I think it had to do with the Shadow Flame because he wanted to make sure that he could have a Shadow Flame play before turn six. Well, Roger, I mean, I don't know if you saw the emotion of Roger, but those those are wide eyebrows on that Fireball. Yeah, oftentimes Mage saves Fireball for burn against Handlock because yeah. that's generally the strategy. You get them kind of low and then burn them out. So it's interesting to see a Fireball going down on an inactive Ancient Watcher. Raynad really afraid of that Shadow Flame, wanting to preserve his board. Yeah, he knew that if he had played like, if he had a board of Mana Worm, Sorcerer's Apprentice, Azure Drake, if that board got Shadow Flamed... It's you, over. Yeah, you lose a lot of your tempo, so I don't really blame him for doing that, I but having the burn like is really important. Too much. You do the extra damage, but you kind of force your opponent to Hellfire. And if he does Hellfire, if he does have it, yeah, it feels like uh, it won't really work so well because probably going to guarantee a Belcher instead of a Giant. Yeah, well, he got the coin out of the way, though, by bluffing the Counterspell. Okay, so yeah, kind of worked out for him. Mm -hmm. Frostbolt. Still has burn though, and with the Hellfire, Roger's actually sitting at 17 health. Anti Gilbot's actually pretty good. That's amazing. Yeah, procs the Mirror Entity too. Oh, yeah. Wow, it's interesting he didn't choose to play it there and goes for the tap instead. The thing is, now he probably can't play it. Yeah, because you gotta get the Molten Stuff first. Fireball was actually lethal there. I'll show them! I'll show them all! Yeah, he's actually too off lethal. Yeah, it's really close. Yeah. Well, I say you go for it. Yeah, you're, you've already used one of your burn spells. You're probably never going to get a chance to get him lower than this, so you might as well just try and go for it and hope that he doesn't have... The thing is, like, putting your phone exactly at 10. Oh, He's going to double yeah. Molten Giant and Heal Bot. Well, you got Mirror Entity up, so... Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that makes it awkward. Yeah. You're going to get a Molten Giant. He's got a, like... A molten Giant... Nah, molten Giant over. Shadow Flame. And then... Yeah, that's what he's gonna do. Raynad only has seven damage, so he's three off. Yeah. And Roger has the heals to back this up. Yeah, he's got Siphon Soul plus anti kill bot. Mirror image off the top. That's not gonna help him off. It's gonna help him block some damage, which is okay, but Yeah, they're I, taking I, eight. I think it's gonna help I think it's gonna help quite a bit because um if if Roger heal bots and he has no taunt and he puts three damage, he can start start the damage run again. And if he does Belcher it has other problems. Yeah. And getting the mirror entity with the anti kill bot, like you said, is pretty good because that's one of the Ooh. weakest creatures. <laughs> I think you have to trade here. Yeah, so that the mirror image can take another eight. <laughs> yeah. Siphon Soul isn't a card that not too many people run, but it's going to get a lot of value right here. And it hits oh. for one, oh no. Could have been worse, could have been one on the giant. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that worked. Yeah. Well, wow. <laughs> if it went face, he could have just frost bolted it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he really needs his burn. 
Yeah, exactly. I don't disagree with the fireball play early on because that shadow flame could have uh, ruined his day a lot earlier than it did. But it just seems like it's gonna be really hard for Reyna to finish this. He yeah. needs Archmage Antonidas. This is one of those matchups where the aggressive deck has like a window, and uh, Reyna had missed his window. He was just two damage off lethal at that yeah. key point. Well, he got Not the good flame cannon target, but I mean. Every spell that he uses to clear off these creatures is a spell that he won't have for burn, and 18 yeah. health is a really safe spot for Roger. Yeah. So, you can tell he's playing super fast. He knows that yeah, this he's is, got the victory in his sights. This side. is game point for Roger, and he's, he's about to take it. Yeah. Even if Raynad gets the Antonitis, which he needs. Oh, <laughs> wow. There he goes. Why, hello there. Roger has the Lothab to, to beat it. He might even think about just... Nah, he can't even save it, because he's starting to take a lot of damage. Yeah, he's got to go for this and get two fireballs out of it, at least. Trying to go for all three fireballs, but... Lothab's going to stop that plan immediately. Or Defender Vargas, he can just kill it outright. I think he's gonna, just going to try to kill it outright. I think he hit the bomb in, see what happens. Both of Argus. And that was pretty much Raynad's last chance of, of being able to yep. come out on that one. All right, he goes ahead and concedes. Some time. Yeah. And Roger wins the series 3-1 to one over Raynad. He's, He's really be, relieved there. Yeah. He's going to be the first player in Group A to move on to that winner's match. He's got one more match to win. If yeah. he wants to get to that playoff stage. He will have to uh, defeat the winner of Oskaka and Double O's. Yep, exactly. To get to that stage. It is it is a really big deal to win that first game because um, it, you, you have to only win two games rather yeah. than, you know, two out of three potential. Yeah. So Ray has got a pretty long day ahead of him then. He's got to play in the uh, loser's match. And if he wins that, he's got to win even one more match just to qualify for the round yeah. of eight. Yeah, so. and then he's got to get up tomorrow and play the round of eight if he's able to qualify. Mm -hmm. So getting up in the morning might be the hardest thing too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so there was a couple turns uh, in the the Warrior game where Raynet had some opportunities. Um, it, it seemed like a better line of play, but I don't know for sure. Yeah, yeah there's really no way to completely tell. But uh, yeah, I would have liked to see him go for it. I think. Mm -hmm. He played a little bit passively as the patron warrior, yeah. which you tend to kind of want to do because you're a combo deck and you think, I can just yeah. slow the game down and win with all my combos. But oftentimes, just YOLOing out the patrons against decks that don't have adequate AoE is correct. But that draw from Roger was pretty yeah. sick. The draw from Roger was the only reason why he was able to take it. Yeah, because yeah. So. otherwise that deck is pretty rough against the, the patron warrior. So, But as yeah. we mentioned, Druid some kind of sometimes can just have games where... Nothing can beat him. I'm kind of curious what him. that's like. Like you've, you've played a lot of Druid. Yeah. What What is that like? The, the close to unbeatable Druid draw. Is it like one in five? For me, it's like one in fifteen. Okay. I don't know. It's not very. It doesn't okay. happen very much. Amaz, on the other hand, he's a very very <laughs> big Druid player. He loves Druid. Okay. I think he was the only person in like top twenty or top fifteen or whatever he was last season playing yeah. Druid, and I watched him on the the couch in the living room at the Archon house, and he just had that, what Roger's hand was, plus a little more every single game. Okay. So, he knows what it's like. Oz is a very, very skilled Drew player. Well, yeah. we do have a winner interview ready with Roger on stage, who's standing by with Dan. Thank you very much, TJ. That's right, I'm joined by Roger, the winner of the first match to start off day number two. Uh, we're going to start off the question, just asking about how Roger's doing, because you know, Raynad did look a little tired because he woke up late, but... I'm wondering how Roger's doing as well, because he's traveling straight from Via Game over in Romania. So my first question is, is Roger feeling all right? Because he started off the day well. Is he tired at all from traveling? Uh, he's very, very tired. <laughs> Is, uh, I guess he's always tired if he's traveling so much. Uh, so, you know, have you ever been to America before? And if so, how are you enjoying California? And, you know, what's your favorite thing about it so far? Uh, 
Uh, he thinks California weather is really nice. Uh, this is his first time in America, and he's uh, very happy to be here. Have you had In N Out Burger yet? He said it's it's pretty delicious and it's pretty big. <laughs> I agree, I agree. Especially uh, considering Taiwan, you can't really get the same amount of things. Um, okay, cool. And I guess the last question you want to ask is, uh, now that Colento has been eliminated, you said in the interview that he was probably the player you're fearing the most, but he's no longer in the tournament. Is there another player you're worried about at all? Uh, at first, he was kind of uh, sad that Kalinto was eliminated because he wanted to get revenge. Uh, so, but now it's he's just looking forward to play whoever's next. All right. Well, you will play the winner of Oskaka and W Lows. So we don't want to take too much of your time. You do have another match, so good luck in your next match and congratulations. And with that, though, we're going to head over to TJ, who's on the couch with a couple of players who transitions to our next match in Group C. All righty, thank you very much, Dan. It's always great to hear from Roger. I really like him as a player. I'm joined here with uh, Dart from Team Illuminati and, of course, uh, Kabi, who we saw play yesterday, who unfortunately was eliminated. Uh, so, Kabi, we just saw Roger take out Reynad 3-1. to one. What are your thoughts on both of these players? Um, I'm really happy with how Roger played. He played really well every, every game. Uh, there is... Nothing I would like to say that he misplayed. He played the way he had to play every single round. About Reyna, like the last game where he played in Mage versus Hanlock, he used Firewall to, uh, because he was afraid of Shadow Flame, which makes sense. But from that on, from that moment onwards, it's just like downhill because you don't have the burn to finish the game. Yeah, definitely. It was um, a pretty rough matchup in the Druid hand that he had in that one game. Did you see that the Druid game? I saw every game, yeah. That hand was pretty ridiculous. So Dart? He had a pretty ridiculous hand, but the Patron also had a, a great hand. He curved pretty well, but there was just nothing he can do against that kind of hands. Sometimes Druid, sometimes druid just, just kills you. Sometimes Druid just kills you, and there's nothing you can do. Well, Dart, you're on uh, Team Illuminati. Some of your uh, teammates are uh, playing throughout the weekend. We have the Rat here, we have uh, Koyuki here as well. Uh, who is the best dancer on Team Illuminati? Ooh, uh, I want to say me, but that would be a complete lie. So, I think it has to be its prototype, without a doubt. Um, he just has kind of that tall, hipster style body that just can, when he gets on the dance floor, he, he just gets down and everyone backs away and just lets him do his thing. So I sort of set you up for that question, but I really want to know how you know who the best dancer on Team Illuminati is. That's something that we're just not allowed to tell you. It's a secret. It's a secret. Well, uh, the next matchup is going to be between Double Los and Oskaka. So, Dart, I want to get your thoughts on these players. Do you know a lot about Double Los? Do you know a lot about Oskaka? Uh, yeah, I've actually played both of them quite a few times in a bunch of uh, community-style tournaments. And I know, for one, Oskaka is, without a doubt, one of the best Community Cup players in the game. Probably one of the best Hearthstone players. He seems to always make it through every qualifier that he ever plays in. Um, so he's definitely one of the top choices of who I think is going to do really well in this tournament. Meanwhile, we have w, uh, WW Los, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, he told me that it's uh, Double Los. So uh, he was actually the person who knocked me out of the final tournament. So I kind of want to see him go far, so it makes me look a little bit less bad. But at the same time, I know he's a great player, and he's going to uh, give Oskaka a really good run for his money. All righty. Well, I'm really looking forward to that match. We actually had a chance to sit down and talk with Double Os and Oskaka while they were at the studios earlier this week. So uh, we had a chance to talk to them about Hearthstone, about the competitive scene, and of course about their matchup against each other.